You know what? You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? The lieutenant looks at the weapon demonstratively. You think we have the murder weapon? 4.46 jacketed ammunition, modified for range. We have it. This is it. I'm calling it. We have the murder weapon. Good. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and draws a single line. This feels good, doesn't it? Tearing things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. Murder. The old man does not say more. He just glances into the reeds, then twitches once more. Who decides when war ends, deserter? Like a marionette on some invisible string. Tie up every loose end now. There's no other chance. Show me your kicks. I said there were Yeezys. <laughs> Everything is brands with you individualists. Who cares what <laughs> my shoes are? Sansa. Some shit. He looks at his running shoes covered in mud. Not the same as a trusty old pair of and ones. <laughs> Show me the souls, please, Mr. Doras. Fucking imbecile. The old man stretches out his leg. A black and white spiral pattern covers the sole of the worn out old running shoes on his feet. I'll take imbecile. <laughs> oh, yep. I'll, I'll take imbecile. Oh, yes. The Do maker it. is sensory. The model is called a bay, and the size is 43. These are not the unusual horizontal pattern soles you saw in the dust on the floor of the hidden room. They do, however, seem to be about the same size. Hmm. 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 The size fits, but not the sole. The lieutenant comes to the same conclusion. Maybe it's simpler than that. Drama, red check, 92%. Sire, he doesn't have to be wearing them right now. Yeah, that's true. People change shoes, it doesn't mean you weren't there. Near the room, the victim died in, sneaking around. Racking those brains, are you? Desperate to report something back to your masters. They must have really loved that dead fuck. He squints at you, black pearls gleaming with hatred, peeping in on Clash's bed. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant gives you a quick sideways glance and nods to acknowledge. The prints were his. You can see it in those eyes. He can't keep them from flickering, looking for something. The old man stares at his own prints in the ash around the fire. Silent suddenly, some strange process within him. A gush of wind. Seagulls in the distance. You know who he was. A coalition trained murderer, armored and armed. He wasn't human. The blunt end of a hammer, dripping with blood. A hundred percent. He was a rapist. I'm not saying he didn't deserve it. He was a killer, but he was still under the protection of the law. He was a soldier, too. He was a man. Beating us to the ground, moaning with joy. You hounds get so thorough when a company trained killer dies. I haven't seen you on this coast for 40 years. You know, maybe I should have killed one sooner. Got your attention? Now you stop beating druggies and prostitutes in your basement. Now you come to investigate. Not when they die by the hundreds. He looks you dead in the eye, pupils shaking. He breathes through flared nostrils. <laughs> it wasn't just through the scope. He was there. He was around. He could have ears. He could hear. He could see and take in and identify exactly what they were. This is it. Shot him. Shot him. Say shot him, not killed him. So you shot him. Oh, the inhumanity. 
Empty. One paramilitary less in Revachal. He closes his black eyes. You can almost see him squeeze a tear, a tear out of his eye. His fists begin to tremble from the anger. The lieutenant raises his right arm to Hashi. Hashi, he does not need to be pushed anymore. The ball is rolling. While the lieutenant listens, holding his breath. Just nod. I had them in my sights, both of them, him and the whore. I was breathing with them, in phase, and I pulled the trigger and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth. He begins to smile. I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death. And that stupid look on his face. And his dick still in her. The smile quivers. Then what? Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white. Or what's left of it anyway. My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. And so they did. Mr. Dras, are you aware you're confessing to murder? The lieutenant asks after a second of silence. Yes. A single word is all he gives. And you are looking at them? The victim and a young woman having sex? Through the scope of your rifle that night? Before you shot him? The lieutenant takes out his notebook slowly, very slowly. The old man nods. Why? Because that's what they were doing. He shrugs, then smacks his lips. The motive. This is where the motive is going to come from. You can coax it out of him. The lieutenant's preparing the ground. I think it's pretty straightforward. I don't understand. Do you, detective? I don't understand this part. Why were you looking at them that night? I'm always looking. He cocks his head to the side, then turns his eyes to the city. Another tremor passes his right side, lower in intensity. He saw the enemy. Are you always looking through the scope of a rifle? I'm just trying to understand. A rifle scope has the best magnification. And if you don't like it? You pull the trigger. Yes. Think of it as a form of critique. <laughs> he looks you in the eye. Oh, that's a lie. <laughs> Oh, that's a fucking line. You've got him going. Connect every little piece now. Wrap this up like a gift. Start with when he first saw him. It will give him a chance to ramble. When did you first see the deceased? Three weeks ago. When the rich hag came in on her galley. Her honor guard came in tow. Joyce. He means Joyce. Rich hag. By that you mean Joyce Messier, the Wild Pines rap. Wrinkled up whore. He nods. Whore. Good strong word. I use it often myself. What's with these whores and these pederasts? Aren't you a communist? <clears throat> Moving on. The victim arrived some time after her. Black sexual morals are a bourgeois ploy. <laughs> As to pederasty... The party legalized it in 04. My party, not your liberal masters. He spits it out on the dying coals after gargling a spitball. I see. That kind of communism. So don't you sermonize me, you racist shithole. It's still bourgeois when the bourgeois does it fiddling with their sexual organs. <clears throat> the lieutenant coughs. 
moving on. The victim arrives sometimes after her. They moved into a deserted apartment above the roundabout. Radio equipment out for all to see. Reactionary radio playing. Sloppy and drunk. I've seen their kind during the landing. Those Occidental and mask phalangs weren't conscripts. Boys like us. They were whites. All they know is to destroy and hurt. Whites. Barely alive. They like to kill while they're on their drugs. After the landing, in the burning years, I would take shots at them. End them. The worst ones, if I had a bullet to spare. I could see they've returned now to show their real face. The face they don't dare show their bourgeois voters back on Mundi with their families and polyester clothes. What specifically did you not like about what you saw the night of the murder? Them. Fucky. I didn't like that. He looks at the charred wood. So you were jealous? Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself. Drugged out, soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. And I wanted to see his head explode. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second. Writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But you can't have everything. He shrugs. This man has seen past her, like you did. And now he longs to see her covered in blood. To punish her. How long had you been watching her? Wow. Since she came to Martinez, I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning, behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then, just a spot in the night, moving. Past the fell building on the coast, what was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her, smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. She had a cigarette. Mention of a cigarette. A friend of mine almost got in a fight in the UK because of that. Someone came out and asked him for a cigarette just like that. And he was like, what the fuck did you say? Yeah, your friend needs to fucking know where he's standing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your friend's an idiot. <laughs> that is completely and utterly 100% your friend's fault. Yeah. For not knowing the country he's standing in. Yep. yep I, I agree. <laughs> but luckily nothing bad happened. And furthermore, yeah. the fact that, like, it almost escalated to a fight means that clarifying questions were skipped. <laughs> it took a moment. And then alarm was raised. <laughs> Your friend's an idiot. Luckily, he wasn't alone. And there was some someone there to be like, hey, chill. Just wants a cigarette. All right. And then they had a nice chat. What a fool. <laughs> I agree. Her passport and tickets to Villiers. <coughs> and from there to Cachet Bru. In the free state of Seminine, hidden away at the edge of the earth, near the pale. This is the hidden buoy she told us about. You looked into it? After she was gone. He nods. 
Did you keep what was in it? When we found the submersible, it was empty. No. Why would I do that? I didn't need tickets to Villiers. I'd put them back. If I wanted to extort someone, I'd do better. This implies that he's thought about extorting her. Also, a little inconsistency here. He was surprised to hear her name Clausia before. Would he not have seen it on the documents? No, because they were fake. True, there was another weird name on it. There were like three years of names. Yeah. She played with us. Are you sure? We checked the submersible. There's nothing there. You saw her name on the passport, but before when I said her name is Classy, you didn't seem to recognize it. You didn't say Classy in there. Oh, you can ask on three. Okay. What did, what did it say her name was on the passport? Uh, it was something. Uh, I don't remember. It was dark that morning. I only remember her face on the photo. That's fair. Why would I need that trash? I'm not going to the year. A strange confusion comes over him from time to time. Some kind of aberration of the nervous system. Moving on. H. Did, did you uh, continue watching her after this? I did. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks and a body hard and lean and bruised all over black and yellow I could see she's taken a beating I could see who she was too a spook on the run Revachal's the cloaker of capital now all the bag men and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals you could tell she was a spook from the documents she had different color hair on the photo and glasses Forged. Some sordid bourgeois affair. I heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He's setting it up for you. The bruises. You can't make that out in a scope. And you could see her bruises through the scope of a rifle. You can't see bruises through a scope. It's just a blur. He shakes his silver gray head. Yeah, it starts as the premise of that soldier who stayed on the island fighting the war in his head. But then it becomes one of what someone who knew what happened, watched time pass, kept moving, and like stayed in the shadows, but lived aware of everything in and parallel, got, and got as close as he wanted to to anything he wanted to. How does he know those minute details about her body? You wanted to punish her, so you killed him. You had feelings for that woman. Yeah. Well, again. Pinball room. Hole in the wall. Mm. Yep. Footprints in the dust. Could have changed shoes. Found the people. It quickly comes to you. The bruises on her body... Any chance you've seen them through a hole in the wall? Ever see her through a window or a roof? On a roof? Oh, yes. Cutting those drugs of hers into little lines with a knife. Masturbating. Did you make that hole? With a clip point knife. Shit. Good for listening in, too. For hearing the moaning and the snorts. Okay, perception. Ever see her through a window or on a roof? Hold on a minute. I just like everybody who, um, prior to this, a couple moments ago, was ripping and roaring in applause about the deserter doing nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. He did nothing wrong. It's always like that. Keep that same energy. Yeah. Remember who you are. You know what I should do? I should go back through the logs and write down all the names. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Because there's names attached to those big green yeses. Yo, that chat is available. <laughs> now I'm saying? Now I mean? You feel me? <sighs> it's 
getting hot. Feel me? <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Like that, too. Yes. Bending like a bow against the glass. You went through a secret route behind the warning in rags. Those were your footprints there. You just changed your shoes. I've been through all of Martinez. Every nook and cranny. And that too. Mm -hmm. Yes, that too. The things they did in that little room. What she'd do to feel good. Funny the way light works. You turn it on inside and it gets so dark out you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the 20s when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do some shit, but... He keeps shaking his head. Those two took the cake. You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. A quick glance at you. Who knew the end was a voyeur? One more loose end down. We're doing this, detective. Yeah, Death has seen it all, huh? How did you get in there? The hidden pinball workshop. No, there's a an old man that's a sniper in Metal Gear Solid 3. His name's The End. <laughs> oh, okay. He has a parrot. <laughs> well, not there yet for me. <laughs> I can just walk in there now after a good wash. I told you, they think I'm an antisocial. Closing hour is a good time. The kitchen's empty. You had to open the steel door in the kitchen? How? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois gay merchant lived there. I don't know, 15 years ago? He left spare keys all over, and I took one. Then I saw her turn the light on one night in my scope. He points toward the warning in racks. Oh. And how did you feel about that bourgeois gay merchant's sense of fashion? Did you like his hat? Was it cool? Did you think the hat was cool? You know? Would it look cool on a proletariat? Seizing the means of production? Andy found his vert, a spare key, like the one hanging behind the union box window. You wanted to punish her, so you killed him. She practically breastfed that man. You wouldn't believe the things she let him do to her. He shakes his head and stares at the ashes. You stare at them too. In your mind, her innocent stain still turns to leaf. Airport bag in hand, silks flowing in her wake. The dream. This has nothing to do with that. I have to admit that I'm quite surprised at um, hearing an old communard talk about um, sexual deviancy mm. and moralizing. Yeah, it's a little unexpected. See you tomorrow, Harry. Her voice rings in the evening air, burning. You saw through her. So did I. She did deserve a good punishing. I hate women too, you know. I'm not like that. I don't think like that. Men are insane. Shake your head. No one gives a shit what you think. You and your cronies kill ten working class men a day. I've heard the statistics on Channel 8. Oh no, not Channel 8. They always bring the truth. Do they? Because <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Pretty sure Channel 8 wasn't a good one. <laughs> now, Channel 5. They got to some... vouch for that? Yeah. Formerly known as All Gas No Bricks. Not bad. You can tune into that one. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure Channel 8 just hired Measurehead as their latest correspondent. 
He's a professional. He's got the 9 to 10 p.m. slide. <laughs> you had feelings for that woman. There's... There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's, it's not enough. The coals of his eyes glisten suddenly, like stones dripping with water. Is he crying? Man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you have your eye on something there. It's weakness, I know. There have been others? Was that why you left the dried flowers behind her window? Oh my god, if you caught them, it would have had a point. Oh. Kim would have looked at you like you're crazy. And it actually would have come back around in the end and had relevance. Yeah. And when you stop to go, like, damn it, those flowers, though. And Kim's like, what the fuck, dude? And you're like, no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Once again, reality bends to make your insanity so sane that the rest of the world is nuts. Yep. There was something there. The flowers were there for a reason. Just cramering the world. <laughs> old school, not new school. Yeah, old school. I was like, yeah, I'm not about that. <sighs> yeah. The fucking flowers. Yes, over the years. It's not unproletarian to feel something. Was, ah. Was that why you left the tried flowers behind her window? It's not unproletarian to peep, observe. Oh, I thought. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Voix. Stare. Zoom. Ooh. Cut holes in the wall. Observe. Can it just be feelings? <laughs> it's just, just feelings. Can you fit your feelings through a hole in the wall, Reggie? Oh my god. Like, maybe roll them up? Needs to be a bigger hole. Perhaps a little bit lower. But at eye, eye level, yeah. I don't know if you can fit your feelings through that <laughs> hole. <laughs> you have some knee pads, no problem. Yeah, you know. Nothing wrong. Did nothing wrong. <sighs> No. He starts to shake his head again. A sunflower on a withered stalk. I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying like a child in the corner of her room on the floor. Like she does sometimes. When was this? <laughs> I was about to I was about to say it's not a <laughs> Okay, well. Anyway, there might be more here. I'm, I'm, I'm preemptively interrupting, but I, I, I was I was going to say, it's not unproletarian to hate the carousel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that communes had a lot of carousels and fairs, and you know. it takes a good engineer to build a good carousel and to keep it greased <laughs> and torqued. The day after I killed him. And you brought her Maybells. Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. It's as if something put the thought there to leave the flowers. You wanted to console her. You wanted to manipulate her. Something put the thought in you. A compulsion. Same thing. What do you mean, put? He raises his eyes. They're round and wide. A brief flash of terror. Oh, I just got this feeling from what you said. Do you agree? Maybe. I told you. I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. He lowers his head and just stares at the logs. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. He wipes his eye. In the silence. The lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more. One more down. So in conclusion, it wasn't about him. It was about her. 
occur. He repeats, staring at the ashes, then the reeds. There's a twitch in the corner of his eye. Yeah. I mean, time was the, the real enemy in the end with him. And then everything after that was coping mechanisms mm. for the decision that he made. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. That's it. Motive. We have it. Where is she, that classier? I haven't seen her there for days. The old man looks at you. How good is your scope? Yeah, you should have seen everything, huh? You missed the fucking party? You missed the car? You missed the watch your head on the way into the back of the... <laughs> 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 oh, man. <laughs> Man, I'm not down with that. <laughs> hey, careful! Watch your head! Watch your head! Watch your head! Careful! Careful! <laughs> these cars, these uh, these motor carriages, they're pretty low. They're pretty low these days, you know. <laughs> Shit! Oh man, some people are just blessed, you know. <laughs> like you get Locked one warning. With your masters, like I'll be. Maybe we'll meet. She kept staring into the scope, you know. In the end. Like she knew. Mm. Staring at the island, the fort, like she knew I was here. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I want to believe that. That's interesting. Across the harbor, on the banks of the river Esperance, cold rain falls on Precinct 57, a two-story box of duraluminium near the gates to Terminal H. Look east. Inside a cell, a young woman is withdrawing from amphetamines, barbiturates, and alcohol all at once, while two men in brown suits wave ICP badges at a young policeman. She hears the door open. and knows it's over. They've come for her. Outside, it's springtime. The river flows blue and green into the Bay of Martinez. There, on a dilapidated jetty in a nameless village, two police officers and one special consultant look across a narrow strip of sea. The ruins of a seafloor stick out of the water, built by Philippe II reappropriated by the commune then lost in the landing fuck he's there doing what exactly i don't know satellite officer vic Mayer points at the ruins behind that anti-aircraft something that's why we can't see him special consultant heidelstam is optimistic We'll see the boat when he comes. Let's go get a coffee until then. I know this interesting little place. Where? His voice trails off as the three walk down the jetty. As the men go, Patrol Officer Minnow looks back over her shoulder at the crumbling fortification in the rain, like a rotten tooth rising out of the water. Good luck, Harry, she thinks. You need something good for this. We could get more. We've got him talking. Lieutenant uses the opportunity to tell you in a lowered voice. Who knows what he's seen and done over the years? You could get more out of him. He likes talking. Been looking at anything else you haven't liked? What others came before? It's a long time. Yeah. It's a lot of looking. More than 40 years. A tragic comedy. Druggies, prostitutes, and rentiers. 
A strange little engine seems to fire up in him again. It straightens his back. I'm going to assume that is a word for landlords. Rentiers, yeah. Lined up against the wall. Yes, that's exactly what that is. The familiar part, part, part of hatred. More specifically... Specifically, the whole city is a charnel house. Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez... Martinez is the worst. He shakes his head in grave disgust. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is a racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world. Listening to race-themed radio shows. In the ruins. In their lorries. Mm, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, it's cool, though. He can say the K-word. Because he says it affectionately. You see? He got a pass. Oh, man. He got a pass. His dad is Tom Hanks. He got a pass. His friend said it was okay. And now he's allowed to say it. All Listen. is forgiven. There's nothing to as forgive, as, actually. As, as long as you say it with love. Yeah. Pump full of steroids and radio revachal 92. Race this. Race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Mr. Clare. Yes. The fly lava in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippe the Third, a syphilitic murderer on the town square, to spit on the working class. But the statue is in mid explosion, symbolic of his death, is it not? Also, he got in as far as to know about Everard and see, or at the very least, be aware of him in his container since he never yeah. leaves his container. And he continued to be in the shadows. That's fucking nuts. Anything more? Go on. Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachal, at least, pretends to rebuild. These people still live in ruins. Intense, like animals, like those boom boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. He keeps shaking his head with sorrow for the sight he missed. Can you accuse people of letting the dream die when they weren't alive when it was around in the first place? Yeah, it's kind of rough. A bit unfair. The worst of them is the blood-drenched Sucreon on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now. Her gun-toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, no. The worst is that old cock parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. <laughs> it's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins, too. Rene lives. Dude. What does this conversation look like? When you're doing a playthrough that internalizes this and goes all the way in on yeah. the fucking fash. What does this conversation even turn into? I imagine a fight. 
Like, I imagine a life bar just shows up and it becomes, like, round two. Like a Mega Man boss. <laughs> you know? I mean, Kim's not around at that point. He's not sticking around your fucking racist ass. Nope. So you just show up. Alone. The epitome of everything, or possibly with child in tow. <laughs> yep. The epitome of everything that he wants dead. Wow. New game plus immediately. Mm. Every morning he's there. While the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozon, or Kwayamwarang, or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. Okay, then. That's all the rich really want. Sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain, it's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt, Frisell, is now dead. Uh, huh. Oh, okay. Now I have some questions about this. I guess we're going to continue yes ending them. Yeah. The history of this world. We did good when we pushed him under that horse car. If only in the 30s. Those disco whores. What follows is ominous mumbling. You cannot make out a single word. The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center, leaving only a nonsensical sputter. But Disco... There was something about a statue and nihilistic advertising agency people might be worth investigating. Damn, okay, we gotta talk. Disco... Whores? Whores. <laughs> Did you, you hear Christ. the gargle in his throat? Like, what is he talking about? <laughs> That's all he says. Even that word has to be pushed through his teeth with great force. The rage seeps too hard. There's something about the statue of the roundabout and syphilis? Syphilis is a disease Philip III contracted in a whorehouse. The statue is an abomination. Abomination? The bacteria entered his brain and made him squander trillions on sparkling wine, cocaineum, and monuments of himself. His son, Philip IV, the insane, contracted syphilis in the womb. He breathes in with a wheeze of hatred. That is technically possible, although Philip III was not actually syphilitic. He was just a man. <laughs> And he still went on to govern Revachal for 25 years. We lost two million lives toppling that mode of government. And those grotesque statues, too. Hundreds of them. But it's still there. What a keen remark. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's still there. Because Do you, you know why? Because you forgot to take it down? Because the king is holy and his statues are indestructible. Say, because the king is holy and his statues are indestructible, but mean it ironically. Because cynical advertising yuppies erected a deconstructed version of it. I don't know. That's pretty good. No. Cynical design cockroaches like you erected a new, ironic version of it. We did. We tore it down with honest working class plastic explosives. But there it is again, grinning. He shakes his head again in disgust. The same irony, the same cynicism you used to reply was the cynicism that the statue was re erected. And in the end, he's looking at it and saying, Yeah, but you still put it back up, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, 